So as you can see, the carburetor has been removed because now it's time to do the tuning. The problem I had with the carburetor, if you saw from last video, was that after installing my dual wideband oxygen sensor setup, I noticed that there was a red flag. And one of the red flags, the biggest one, was the fact that at wide open throttle, the secondaries uh, didn't provide enough fuel, so I was leaning out in wide open throttle. The other problems that I want to correct is the fact that during cruise my carb was running too rich so I want to lean that out a little bit and the last thing I noticed was for the power for when I you know wanted to pass someone for example just give it a little gas to pass someone it would be slightly lean so I want to rich that up so with this disassembly I might as well do a full carburetor rebuild and cleaning. So I took off the boosters as you can see, I took off everything. So there's the boosters, um, here's a squirter right here, and I'm gonna basically just um, change all the gaskets, uh, change out the check valve that's there, and the little weight, everything that comes in the rebuild kit. Um, for here, for the top um, air horn, I'm going to readjust the floats and then change the needles and seats. Well, I put the carburetor all back together again and now I get the tedious process of tuning it. Tuning the carburetor turned out to be a little bit more uh, harder than I thought it was going to be. It's all trial and error. There is no exact science on what the carburetor is going to do. I mean, every engine is different. That doesn't mean that uh, someone else's setup is going to uh, perform the same way as my setup. So it's all trial and error. What makes the carburetor do different things, in this case the Edelbrox, is the rods and jets. Now, the cruise and the power, which means when you want to accelerate someone, but it's not yet at wide open throttle that is controlled by the rods and so that was one of the main focal points in tuning my carburetor because that is where I would be saving the gas mileage now as far as wide open throttle that's pretty much just a jet change so with the rod setup I had to figure out what those numbers on each rod mean so I did a little research and I'm going to share that with you now and hopefully that will help someone else out when they're trying to choose a rod for their carburetor setup because it applies to every Edelbrock carb not just the 750 CFM which is what I have in my 454 uh, engine. So after learning pretty much the basics you have to go to this chart and decide what you want the carburetor to do. Now this chart here is is primarily only for the primaries which means the main metering system of the carburetor which also means that's what your car is going to be in or doing most of the time because the secondaries are pretty much only for when you're trying to go really fast wide open throttle for all other operations of the car this will take an effect so now basically you're supposed to look at these these uh, numbers and decide which one you want to go to this being your base if you want to go lean you go this way or this way if you want to go rich you go up or this way and that's pretty much the basis of how this works now when you choose a number you're going to go down to the to the next column and decide from that number which thing to do and in this case if i was to choose 16 which on the chart would be right here which would mean that I would be going uh, rich on the power and for the cruise I would be going rich also well you go down to 16 and you pretty much pick out the rod now these numbers right here is what gave me difficulty in understanding um, because 
I went through a lot of these and even with going through all of these over here it didn't accomplish what I was trying to accomplish on the wide band so here's a rod to, to just give you an example the first number <clears throat> the first number right here like for example this one here is 7140 what is it 7147 71 would be this portion of the rod 47 would be this portion of the rod for cruise you want this portion of the rod and for power you want this portion of the rod now knowing those numbers are pretty good and dandy but there's different numbers for different applications so these numbers when you start playing around with these numbers the carburetor will do different things so the first number if you um, want to, to go a little bit richer then you would decrease this number if you want to go um, leaner then you increase the number same thing goes for that one <clears throat> so my base stock calibration was 7147 so I wanted the cruise to be leaner so what I ended up doing was taking that 71 and raising it up and going through the stages now after 71 there's 73 after 73 there's 75 so in my case I would go up two stages to 75 and that would bring my um, air fuel ratio for the cruise leaner same thing would apply if I was to work with the power so that's pretty much the basis of um, the calibration cruising saw it's getting there uh, the air fuel ratio is definitely an improvement over what it was when I first installed the wideband oxygen sensor setup depending on what I do with the gas pedal um, the fuel ratio will change but um, I would have to say the average between all the modulation I can do with that gas pedal I do get it around 14.7 to 1 air fuel ratio now it does go up to sometimes 15 but that just means I'm saving more gas because at that high of a or that lean of a fuel ratio it's more savings in um, in gas and it's not really going to hurt the engine because uh, you're not doing that much horsepower when you're just cruising so I'm definitely thinking that I'm getting an improvement in um, fuel mileage so other things I've been trying out was spacers um, I did try this one here, an open spacer, um, and I'm not trying to get performance out of the spacer. I'm primarily using this to keep the carburetor cool. So I got a half inch and I started out with an open one, um, but now I took this off and I decided to go with a four hole spacer instead. And that is because um, I have a dual plane intake manifold. And with this one, well, there's a space here that's completely open and the engine is able to see what the other side is doing. So with the four hole, um, it does ensure that both sides of the engine are kept separate. So I thought that that might be a little bit better for torque uh, and low end, which is primarily what the car would be doing. And open spaces are, are generally for um, high end. I was just pretty much experimenting to see if I would feel a difference. Now, in the coming fuel tanks, I'll see if I'm actually saving gas mileage. That is, if I can help myself from not mashing the gas pedal all the way down. Performance wise, the engine is just amazing. Part throttle acceleration is totally different 
um, I can definitely feel it really picking up um, when I, you know, do that power portion of the um, acceleration. Wide open throttle, since I richened it up, is amazing. So, if I can help myself from mashing that gas pedal down, I'll probably be able to get to see if I'm actually saving any gas. So, we'll have to see what happens. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching.